Hello, my name is Kael Soares Augusto and I'm a scholarship student at the Compilers Laboratory of the Federal University of Minas Gerais. Today I'll be presenting to you about Elixir's Actors model. First, I'd like to show you what is an actor, why use actors, how to use them, and a little bit of the history of the model. Let's get started! What is an actor? An actor is an entity that sends messages to other actors, receives those messages, acts depending on the message. So, for example, there on the right, you can see that when the message arrives, it is pattern matched to certain options and that leads to different actions. It can also spawn other actors, which are children, and can do all of that asynchronously. So, okay, we have a model and we know what it does, but what are the advantages of using it? So, why should we use actors? Let's start with lightweight. According to the 7 concurrency models in 7 weeks when threads unravel by Paul Butcher, in Erlang and therefore Elixir, an actor is called a process. In most environments, a process is a heavyweight entity that consumes a lot of resources and is expensive to create. An Elixir process, by contrast, is very lightweight, lighter weight even than most systems threads, both in terms of resource consumption and startup cost. Elixir programs typically create thousands of processes without problem and don't normally need to resort to the equivalent of thread pools. This lightweightedness is very good because that means we can create actors freely without worries. Not only that, but the actor model is asynchronous with abstraction, so we don't need to use mutex, lock and unlock, semaphores, parallel program planning or even memory sharing. That is important because these resources do increase the complexity of our programs by a lot, make it much harder to manage and create some incredibly complicated bugs from time to time. Having that asynchronous behavior already in your model helps a lot when creating systems that need to be asynchronous. It has a very simple implementation. To implement things in Elixir's Actors model, you only need to remember three pairs of things, which are extremely small. First is receive and send, so that you can receive and send messages. Second are the actors and their children, which form the objects of our model. And finally, spawn and spawn link, which are able to create the actors that we use. Not only that, but the actors model is robust and fail safe. When an actor stops responding or even crashes completely, it does not stop. Other actors, the execution of our program, or the Beam virtual machine, where Elixir runs, and its parent can just replace it at any moment. Of course, only within best practices, bad code can still create bad results, but Elixir avoids that with its implementation. And also, replacing actors is cheap, so replacing one that broke down for a new one is not a problem. That creates one of the paradigms of the Elixir language, let it crash. This paradigm states that it is better to crash certain actors or parts of code and replace them instead of dealing with absurd edge cases that are complicated or result in poor performance. That way we can simplify a lot by simply mentioning raises and putting new actors to, to go on with the job. Built-in communication. Messages in Elixir are built-in with send and receive mailboxes for messages and multiple processes all at once. This is essential, as other models depends on the user to create them. For example, object-oriented programming often needs to have communication between objects and computers implemented. Meanwhile, the Elixir Actors model can do this themselves. And much more. Sadly, this is outside of the scope of this presentation, but I do urge you to read more about the Actors model, as it is extremely fascinating and has many more advantages. So, how does it work? We want to actually put it in practice. Let's start with the small example, the Hello World actor. Here we define the name of the actor's module, and right under it we define a function that we can use when we spawn our actor. You can see that the function is extremely simple. It receives a message over here. The receive command waits until a message arrives, and after it arrives it pattern matches to the two options that are there, does a command, and finishes. At the end, we ask it to rerun the function so that it, we can listen to multiple messages. So if we spawn a new actor with this command, you can see that we create a hello world actor and we give him an ID which is stored in the variable of the return of the spawn function. And we ask him to be created with the listen method. 
So now when we send the message to detector ID with the say hi, he will answer with this option. After all, that's what the say hi message matches to. So he answers hello world. But if we send him say goodbye, that only matches to the underscore, which makes him answer sorry, I didn't understand you. In Elixir, the underscore means pattern match anything else to this. So in this case, as it's not the message say hi, he goes to the second option. To see if you've understood this concept properly, here is a little exercise. Figure out what this actor does. I'll give you a few seconds. If you need more, please feel free to pause the video. Three, two, one. That's right, this is the factorial actor. The factorial actor does work well. If we see the example on the right, we create him, put the function that we want, send him ourselves as the listener, and 5 as the number we want the factorial of, and he correctly replies with 120. However, it works well in normal use. If we change the 5 for negative 5, for example, we will end up hanging the program. That's because currently we have no way of dealing with negative numbers. We can do that by first creating an exception. However, when we raise an exception, we do not reply. That would mean that the main program would have to wait until we get a message. And sadly, it won't get the message because our actor will be raising an error. That way, we also will add a little timeout. So now, the factorial can crash, but the program will not. That's pretty neat, right? This is an example of how the actor's model allows robustness. Of course, this is a very simple example, but it shows the essence of how we can create fail-safe programs with Elixir. Now a little bit of history. The actor's model was first mentioned by Carl Hewitt in the paper named A Universal Modular Actor Formalism for Artificial Intelligence, made to be the atom of concurrency of a programming language. His boldest claim was data structures, functions, semaphores, monitors, ports, descriptions, quillian nets, logical formulae, numbers, identifiers, demons, processes, contexts, and databases can all be shown to be special cases of actors. All with one operation, sending messages to actors. Carl Hewitt passed away on December of 2022, but his model will shape the future of concurrent programs for years to come. Thank you for watching my presentation, here are the references I've used in this presentation and these are my contacts. If you have any doubts or wish to contact me for any reason, please feel free to reach out.